March Madness is upon us. This March, a lot of names been bubbling. There's been a lot of drama, a lot of back and forth. One of the names that stuck out more than the rest is DJ Burns. Not gonna play horse with him, I'll tell you that. <laughs> DJ Burns. I'm gonna say his name again. Right now, he's probably my favorite player to watch in basketball. It's amazing watching this guy because he's the epitome of play at your own pace, right? This guy, he barely runs back on defense. He's not flashy. He knows what he's good at and he does what he's good at. You can learn a lot from watching DJ Burns play. So let's get into the tape. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is how DJ Burns has been killing, absolutely destroying college basketball and some of the greatest minds in the game. So DJ Burns is a six foot nine, 275 pound center. So he started his career at Winthrop University. Then he finishes off at North Carolina State. They were an 11th seed going into the NCAA tournament but they've knocked off some big fish. In the ACC tournament, they knocked off UNC to get a bid to the tournament. And in the tournament, most recently, you guys probably have seen, they beat a four seed in Duke, one of the more talented teams in the country. And they're also perceived to be one of the better coach teams in the nation. That is questionable to me. After seeing the tape, they were doing some things that I could not understand. The coaches are following the mold for the most part in college basketball. Nobody's really innovating. Nobody's trying new things. We'll get more into that a little bit later in the video, but to put the focus back on DJ Burns, DJ Burns is not a big scorer. When he's on the left block, he's going to spin baseline every time. He's going to bang with you, bang with you. And what he's good at is he'll bang with you a couple times so he can feel, you can feel his weight. You can feel his strength and you know you have to push back. And as soon as he feels you push back, he'll use your body as leverage and your strength and you pushing as leverage and spin off of you. And that's how he gets a lot of his left block post up buckets. So like I said, left block, he'll spin baseline and either throw the floater about five feet away from the basket or he'll get all the way to the rim. Now, if he's on the right block, he's going to bang with you, bang with you, and then just jump stop for a nice little lefty hook right over the front of the rim. He does have the ability to spin baseline on the right block as well, but you really know that he's always come back to the left hand. He's not a right hand finisher. He's always going to come back to the left hand. So for me, like I said, in the Duke game, the coaching was questionable. First off, Duke has no true five, right? Nobody that can bang with him. I mean, they had one player that was, you know, playing athletic and he did a couple things to deny the ball from even getting into the post. However, once DJ Burns gets the ball on the block, you're pretty much a dead man. They weren't sending double teams from the baseline. So if you just give DJ Burns a bunch of time to back you down, five and six seconds to back you down, back you down, he's going to get a good shot. And that's why he had 29 last night. His coach does a good job with sets, right? They don't have just one or two set plays for him to get the ball on a left block where he's comfortable. No, he has plays where he can down screen at any time for one of his guards and then just turn right into a post up. He'll post up in the middle of the paint. He'll post up on the right block. He'll post up on the left block. He'll post up on the right elbow, left elbow. It doesn't matter. The coach knows the game plan is simple. We want him with the ball in his hands, back to the basket, backing down smaller defenders. So this does make it harder to scout them because you have to always be on point. You have to always know where he is, right? Sometimes these screens aren't even like deep in the paint. He doesn't really like to get the ball on a deep paint touch. He'd rather get the ball right by the three-point line and from there, he's got these quick moves that most bigs just can't keep up with. If you don't know how to guard it, you're toast. And that's pretty much what happened last night. You might ask yourself, how do you stop this guy? You know, if he's 275 pounds, our centers are only, I don't know, 230, 240 tops. How do we stop this guy? The answer is you do have to send him baseline and you got to trap when he spins baseline. Bang with him a couple times. You know when that spin comes because it's going to come have the trap man coming from baseline and he'll spin right into the trap you can't leave too early because he is a decent passer out of the paint when it's an obvious pass so in the last five games he's been putting up really impressive numbers against unc in the acc tournament championship game he played 28 minutes he had 20 points seven assists four rebounds then in the first round of the NCAA tournament, he opened up play with 16 points. Second round against Oakland, he had a 24 and 11 piece. And then just last night against Duke, he had 29 and four and three. So it doesn't look like he's gonna be slowing down anytime soon. How far can he actually take them? 
if you ask me, DJ Burns, as long as he stays out of foul trouble, he is susceptible to doing a silly foul at least once or twice per game. If you can keep him out of foul trouble, you can keep him on the court. He is going to take you all the way because there's no answer for him in college basketball right now. The size, the IQ, the touch, he's good for a bucket anytime he's on the court. As long as he can dribble the ball two, three times, he's good for a bucket. Is there anybody that's smart enough to send a double at him at the right time so you get the ball out of his hands? I'm not sure. Doesn't look like it's going to happen because if Duke didn't figure it out, I don't know if any of these other teams are going to figure it out. Now, if there ever was anybody in college basketball that can give him some problems, give him some work, it is Purdue's big man, Zach Ide, who happens to be seven foot three. He's not the strongest big in the world. He doesn't have the greatest feet. Doesn't have the greatest touch, but he gets the job done. He had 40 last game and holding up pretty well defensively with three blocks. This game coming up against Purdue and Zach Ide, can DJ Burns hold up? Can DJ Burns continue his dominance? If you ask me, yes. I think he's a very crafty player. He's in the zone. That's one thing that you just can't scout for. You know, sometimes the players get hot, especially you got the whole nation watching everybody's you know, commenting on you. You got Jokic bigging you up on Twitter. You know, right now you got the college basketball world at the tip of your fingernails. That adds a whole extra layer of X factor. I think this is one of those players that loves to rise to the occasion. How can he be effective against Zach Ede, you ask? It's simple. Zach Ede is not stepping outside the paint to guard DJ Burns. DJ Burns can actually face up against Zach Ede, hit his little 15-foot jump shot, and that gets Zach Ide a little bit off his off his game because he's like, damn, I'm giving up buckets. He's going to want to come out. And as soon as he steps outside the paint, DJ Burns has him dead because once DJ Burns does his patented baseline spins on you, he puts you on that big back of his, there is nothing you can do. You're not blocking him from over the top because he's crafty enough to get a reverse layup off. If DJ Burns continues to play the way that I know he can play, I predict another big night against Purdue. And it's going to come down to his shooters, you know, Purdue, they might double them. Zach they might have a decent game against them, whatever the case might be. But there's going to be a lot of tension on DJ Burns. So when there's movement without the ball, when DJ Burns gets the ball, that's going to open up a lot of cuts and a lot of open shots for other guys. If they can hit shots, they can beat Purdue. As far as the next level, do I see DJ Burns getting to the league? And do I see him being effective at the next level? I mean, let's keep everything in perspective here. He is 23 years old. He came out of high school the same year as Zion Williamson. He was a number three ranked player in South Carolina at, that year, as a matter of fact. So he's not like some, you know, up and comer, out of nowhere prospect that's taken it. No, he's been somebody. His game, his pace is more suited for overseas leagues, more notably China. And that's not a shot at all. You know, he can make a lot of money in China. But in China, you know, they'll throw the ball to you in the post. You can bang, you can bang, you can take 20 shots a game. Like, you know, he needs to be in a situation like that. Like I said, he's barely making it up and down the court. I can't see him keeping up with the pace of the NBA. So for me, that's out of the question. However, I'm sure he'll get an invite to a training camp. I'm sure he'll get an invite to a summer league and he'll have opportunity to, to prove himself. You know, if he really wants to take, take it serious at the next level, then he's going to have to really extend his range. He's going to have to shave off some weight and be able to move up and down. I mean, just look at Zion, right? Zion is essentially a more athletic version of him. And even Zion was struggling at times of the season, weight issues, being in shape, and being able to keep up with the pace of the NBA game. All things considered, DJ Burns is a great story for college basketball. It's a great underdog type story. You know, this guy was averaging 13 points per game. The lights get bright and this guy starts going off for pretty much 20 a game. Right now, like I said, he is one of my favorite players to watch at the moment in basketball. You know, <laughs> if DJ Burns is playing and Jokic is playing on the same night, I'm watching both. That says a lot for it to be a North Carolina State game. I've never watched a full North Carolina State game before this guy played there. So kudos to you, DJ Burns. Keep working on your game. You're doing great things. I personally think that you're going to take your team to the NCAA championship game. And when it happens, you guys can watch this video and say, yo, Dwayne called it. So there you have it. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you like the video, like the video. If you got a comment on the video, comment on the video. If you subscribe to me, I subscribe to you. Peace.